Good day students. Welcome to our presentation for research project phase one that is B.Ed. RP 22. Speaking, speaking to you, I'm your tutor, uh, Etuna Simon Nifikwa. You can contact me on 085-266-3698 and you can also feel free to drop me an email at jet at etunangifikwa at gmail.com etunangifikwa at gmail.com and the best time to contact me is between 8.30 and 4.30. Starting with our presentation, uh, we, were, we are going to focus on the research proposal. It is very important at this stage that you understand how to draft your research proposal and where to begin. So I will share some of the uh, layout uh, for this presentation. That is a reflective thinking questions that you may understand. And it will also help you as you develop your research topic. And then also as you, you know, start preparing your research proposal. And it is uh, also some important information that I will talk about in this presentation and will also look at the research proposal outline that is of utmost importance in this presentation and also to give you some important tips because you will need it at this stage remember this is the phase one of your research project these are some of the reflective thinking questions that you can think about um, like for example, what do I want to study? It is very important to understand what it is that you want to research on. Where is your focus in terms of your project? Where do you want to focus? What, it is, what is it that you would want to find out? Why is the topic important? For example, remember at this stage, you need to develop a topic. You actually need to send me a draft of your topic via email for approval so we will then look at your topic um, give you comments where possible or make few adjustments and also just to give you more guidance as you develop your research topic how is it significant within the subject areas covered in my course so it is always important to understand the significance of the study that you are uh, that you are envisioning to propose you see what problems will it help solve? It is very important to identify problems already so that you know if I have to carry on with this project, I'm as, uh, anticipating to solve this kind of problems. How does it build upon and hopefully go beyond research already conducted on the topic? So remember there are previous studies that were done in that particular subject. So what exactly should I plan to do and can I get it done in the available time? Remember, you are given a, a time frame to submit your proposal, right? Because before you can continue with your project, that is now to, 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 to actually go out there in the field, um, do research uh, observation or classroom observation, for example, interview participants, you need to make sure that your proposal is approved. So before you can get it approved, you then need to draft it and send it through. So we will talk about that proposal in this presentation. So always think about those questions as you are, especially when you are developing your, your topic. I always tell students not to panic if you cannot get it right. Just send us a concept note, particularly focusing on what it is that you would like to do, how are you going to do it. So just have it a one page is sufficient even if it's just a paragraph then we can have an idea on how to guide you and advise you further in your journey uh, towards your research project okay continuing uh, we are going to look at some of the important information that you should consider you need to prepare a research proposal in the area of your expertise. Remember, the area that you are comfortable with, that you are knowledgeable about, you know, you need to choose any topic of your choice in your area of interest as well, the one where you have interest in. Don't take something that you are not interested in because in the end, you will 
end up doing something that you don't like so it is very important to actually um, propose an idea of what it is that you have an interest in because you will enjoy doing that project you need to ensure that your proposal is 12 pages long including table of contents and uh, references and talking about table of contents I particularly want to uh, emphasize that it is very important not to type the table of content but to generate it with the Microsoft Word document it is very easy to do that the first thing that you need to do is you are typing your your your, your information for your research proposal you should actually um, format headings accordingly if you see in Microsoft Word on top there where the headings are you know there is uh, always uh, instructions you will see the headings are labeled clearly with uh, ABC letters then you know that this is a main heading the subheadings uh, so forth so you should format them accordingly then later on it will make your work easier such that you will then only need to generate the table of content just to go through the Microsoft Word if you go to file uh, you know then you'll be able to via you know generate the table of content in insert so you then generate it automatically normally I advise students to opt for the second option so make sure that your proposal is typed and you are using Times New Roman that is a font with font size 12 and line spacing 1.5 that is very important also make use of APA format for both in-text citations and uh, reference list so remember that at IOL we are we have adopted the um, APA referencing style. So no other referencing style, only APA. It is very important to adhere to that. And please read further on uh, APA referencing style so that you know how do I then reference uh, in-text citation, how do I then reference um, at the end, once I have used the resources, after I credit the resources, how do I then compile a reference list? So making use of the APA referencing style. Okay, uh, in terms of the research proposal, we are going to have a look at the layout thereof. So it, is, it will be presented in three sections. We, you are expected to actually have three sections of your research proposal. Section one is basically uh, focusing on introduction, where you would need to introduce your proposal. And then section two is basically focusing on literature review. And then section three, that is methodology. And then please remember, you need to have references and everything should be uh, included in the 12 pages so that is the title page uh, the section one information about introduction information about section two that is literature review or the subsections inclusive uh, in all those sections to make up the 12 pages including the reference list so very important to pay attention to that so let us start with section one. Particularly, you, there's a need for you to understand um, background of, this, of the study. You know, there you need to give a brief background. It's always very important to, to justify your study. So we are going to look at um, background of the study, statement of the problem here, questions and or objectives of the study, rationale or significance of the study, limitation of the study, the limitation of the study, as well as definitions of terms. So particularly, I want you to pay attention to if a heading has uh, two subheadings, like to say, for example, questions or objectives of the study, rationale or significance of the study, you are actually expected to choose either. You, you should either do one and not both you cannot address 
both questions and objective in your proposal just focus on one if you are opting for objective then your heading should read as objectives of the study if you are focusing on questions then your then your heading should read as questions of the study the same applies to rationale or significance of the study so if your heading is then if you opt to focus because they are addressing the same thing although they may be presented differently so then you can opt for rationale then your your heading should read as such if you are opting for significance of the study the same applies to that okay let us start with background of the study for the purpose of the background of the study you are expected to provide the necessary background or context of your research problem your readers need to understand where is your study coming from why that study you are actually justifying why you are doing that particular study just to mention um, before we continue I, I have noticed that students normally forget about the title page in fact before I speak about the background let let us quickly focus on the title page the proposal should also have a title page that comprise of your the students information the information of the institution and it should actually start with the the heading you know the topic of your your your, your proposal of your study so if your if your title reads is teachers use of ICT in the teaching of life science in their classroom that is now the title it should be on top and then you can then have your name and all the information that is required uh, the title page so let us continue with the background of the study as I indicated earlier that there is a need to provide the necessary background or context of your research um, problem and you should actually provide a brief but appropriate historical uh, backdrop you know people your readers actually need to understand where is this study coming from has it been done before in Namibia particularly has it been done you no know, that is now locally we are referring to has it been done regionally has it been done globally so you need to give us a draw a backdrop so that we understand where is this study coming from because you are not reinventing the wheel there is also a need to provide the contemporary context in which your proposed research questions occupies the central stage what does that mean so we need to understand that context where is that coming from where do you place your study what is the focus of your study identify key players that is the expert in the field and refer to the most relevant and presentative uh, representative publications very important because you need to understand that there is a lot of studies that were done out there so you need to identify those ones that are related to what it is that you are doing in short try to paint your research question in broad brushes and at the same time bring out its significance very important to actually bring out why is your research important you know to the body of knowledge for example we move on to statement of the problem you should actually give a brief background about the problem in relation to the literature so remember you are reviewing literature so you need to state the research problem what is the problem it is very important once you give a brief background of what it is that you are going to to to, to study especially in terms of a problem then you need to state the problem give a more detailed explanation about the the purpose of the study than what you stated in the introduction remember you are not repeating what you stated in the introduction here you should actually every time relate to the literature and this is particularly important if a problem is complex or multifaceted so you should actually always re relate to the literature and describe the major issues or problems to be addressed 
by your research what can your study do about the research problem so we need to understand what is your study going to do it is always important i always advise my students to at least present statement of the problem in two paragraphs the first par paragraph you are actually uh, providing a brief background of the statement and then you will then state the the problem you know once you state the problem you should then indicate what your study will do concerning the stated problem be sure not uh, be sure to note how your proposed study builds on previous assumptions about the research problem that is actually very important there we need to know how uh, you are building on previous assumptions you know from previous studies you are not reinventing the wheel take note of that moving to research questions as i explained already you should either choose research questions or objectives of the study you mean you should not do both state the research questions in an attempt to answer you know um the problem or the research questions or objective whichever it is choose one either objectives or research questions and not both so you are not to write a heading that is comprising of the two you need to make a choice already clearly before you submit your proposal place your research question in the context of either a current hot area or an older area that remains viable you see indicate the main research questions and sub questions where applicable it is always very important even in terms of objective perhaps you have the main objectives and then these are the sub or you have one main questions and maybe three sub questions that are building on the main questions for example indicate the main objectives where possible as well so that is very important there. There as, as, as the researcher, you make use of your own discretion as per the study that you are proposing. So we don't dictate on that. You choose yourself if you want to go for research questions or, or research objectives. Same applies to the rationale as explained earlier or significance of the study. You should choose either rationale or significance, not both, and present the rationale of your proposed study and clearly indicate why it is worth doing. You should answer the so what. You know, people might have that. Why your study? Why that particular study? Why should people, you know, why should anyone care? That is actually what you need to keep at the back of your mind. Because remember, you are justifying your study here. Why the study should be done. The specific purpose of the study, what it is, why is it important, why is it necessary. Describe how the anticipated result will impact future scholarly uh, research, theory, practice, forms of interventions or policy making, for example, particularly the line ministry, if you are doing it uh, through the Ministry of Education, how are the findings of your research, how will it inform uh, policy makers, you know, perhaps you are looking at the policy, maybe you have identified some gaps in terms of policy, um, particularly maybe the ICT uh, education policy. So you then need to make sure that you clearly um, indicate how this will then impact the future in terms of decision making. Perhaps you would want to advise the teachers, you know, in terms of teaching practice. Okay, so that should really clearly come out. We are moving on to limitation of the study. You are expected to explain how you plan to go about conducting your research. Clearly identify the key resources you intend to use and explain how they will contribute to your analysis of the topic. What are the possible limitations of your study? Avoid using financial constraints and time as limitations. I always advise my students that remember you are actually required to carry out this project. So you cannot tell us that you will not be able to carry out this project because of financial constraints. It is 
actually part of the requirement for you to complete your degree okay so you actually also you are ought to make time you need to make time for your for your proposal you need to make time for your project so make a reference to either participants settings and or context so it is important to perhaps relate to participants and say for example this study is limited to two participants or two teachers from a selected pre-primary school that is just an example maybe the study is limited to uh, two teachers from a secondary schools in the commerce region you see or from two uh, selected schools in Irongo region that is just an example there so you need to make a reference to participants settings and context moving on we are going to look at the limitation of the study set the boundaries of your proposed research in order to provide a clear focus where appropriate state not only what you will study but what is excluded from the study very important to indicate the boundaries in terms of the participants who will be included and who will be excluded for example uh, five teachers from grade 5 uh, grade 10 to 12 will be included in this study for example all right and then you can then indicate um only uh, maybe biology and life science teachers will be included that is just an example and then you can perhaps say physical science teachers and mathematics teachers will be excluded from the study or perhaps you just want to focus on grade 10 teachers then you will exclude maybe the grade 11 and 12 so that should clearly come out so it depends on the study that you are proposing to do okay also very important in section one is what we term as definition of key concept if necessary you should provide definitions of key concepts or terms there you need to indicate how certain terms should be understood in your study depending on the number of terms this can be presented in a table format very important so once you provide a clear excuse me so once you provide a clear definition of term also very important remember to provide the reference you need to credit source of information also uh, indicate how it should be understood in your study remember you are proposing hey here you need to indicate how your reader should understand a certain um maybe a word or term whichever it is like for example when you are saying assessment if you are focusing on assessment you then need to uh, define assessment and how we should understand it in your study also provide reference for that definition for that particular definition we are now going to start with section two there is literature review literature review must be relevant to your topic you need to at least make sure that you logically and clearly present your literature review and at least you should make use of eight separate cited materials and then the review and synthesis of prayers the prior studies related to the research problem under investigation should be clearly presented as such and also focusing on those eight separate cited materials remember it is a proposal and you are given given a, a, a limited number of pages that is 12 pages so it is very important that you summarize this section indicate theoretical or conceptual framework when you need to make sure that um, you clearly state which one you will adopt or adapt in your study and how you will do so you see if you are, if you if your study will be underpinned by a theoretical framework you need to indicate it which theory is that there are various uh, educational theories 
If it's a conceptual framework that your study will develop, you also then need to indicate that you are developing it from which theory. Very important there is part of section 2. Okay, continuing with literature review, what do authors agree on? These are some of the very important questions that you need to consider. Who applies similar approaches to analyzing the research problem? What are the major areas of disagreement, controversies, debate? You need to pay attention to the verbs you use to describe what an author says, does, like for example, as it demonstrate, argue. So you cannot just write Simon 2014, this and that and that. Perhaps you need to indicate, did the person demonstrate something? Did they argue? So that need to come out as you are reviewing the literature. How does your own work draw upon or depart from, synthesize or add a new perspective to what has been said in the literature? So your voice should come out here. You know, as we are reading your proposal, we should be able to hear your voice because remember you are conducting a review of a, uh, of a literature. So you are not um, copying and pasting what other authors said, but you are merely um, reviewing what it is that they have done. So that should clearly come out and we should hear your voice. Okay, that brings us to section three, that is methodology. You know, research proposal is actually very short and brief. Some institutions, you may be required to do it uh, actually even in six pages, you see. So, hence you are given 12 pages. That is actually so much, we are also thinking of adjusting the page numbers to 10 because we feel like students normally just submit things that are not really necessary because remember when it comes to your research proposal, you are proposing what it is that you are going to do, how you, how you are going to do it, and that idea that you have, how you are going to execute it. So moving to this, uh, section three, that is methodology, it will focus on research design, population where applicable depending on the one that you are going to opt for, sample and sampling procedure, instruments, data collection procedure, data analysis, as well as ethical considerations. Those are very important subtopics in methodology section. Starting, uh, we continue with methodology. So the decision as to why the research design and method used were chosen over other options so that need to come out you need to indicate why that particular method you need to indicate clearly if it is qualitative or quantitative methods that you have opted for and also you need to here you need to demonstrate your knowledge of alternative methods as well are you going to do a mixed method that need to clearly come out okay make use um, of the approach that is most appropriate and most valid way to address your research question. So we need to understand if you are opting for qualitative, you need to justify as to why is qualitative applicable to your study. Why is qualitative and or quantitative applicable to answer the research questions? Remember when you, you, you develop the research questions, those are the questions that you are attempting to answer as you are going to carry out your research. So there you need to decide on the method and appropriate that are appropriate for qualitative and or quantitative research. So that clearly need to come out. You are not going to address both unless you want to do a mixed method, then you can then justify accordingly. Okay, moving on, we are still busy with the research methodology. If you are opting for qualitative research, you need to understand that this is a um, multi-method that is in focus involving an interpretive or neutralistic approach. So 
the understanding uh, is underlying reasons, you know, opinions and motivation. So there is always a need to motivate why opting for that uh, particular uh, qualitative method, and also uh, in terms of um, qualitative research, I always uh, encourage students to clearly indicate if you are going the route of a single case study or are you going to do a multiple case study or is it going to be ethnographic study so that need to clearly come out from the onset it need to be stated clearly and also in terms of qualitative analysis your method section needs to be more elaborate you need to elaborate on the methods also in terms of data collection process in qualitative research this has far greater impact on the result as compared to the quantitative research you see so it's in-depth understanding of your you know the participants context the settings their perspectives so you would get deeper into it so it is very important that this clearly comes out Okay, moving on, uh, if you are opting for quantitative study, then it is very important that you understand that the method section typically consists of uh, different sections, the design particularly, uh, is it a questionnaire study or laboratory experiment, what kind of design do you choose, uh, are you doing a quasi-experimental, so that need to clearly come out as well. Subject or participant, these are now your, your research participants who will take part in your study. What kind of sampling procedure do you use uh, in terms of population? Because here, normally they talk about population as well. Uh, in terms of instruments, what kind of uh, measuring instruments or questionnaires do you use? Why do you choose them? Are they valid? Are they reliable? So those justification thereof need to be clearly stated as well. In terms of the procedure, how do you plan to carry out your study? What activities are involved? How long does it take? So these are the questions that should be at the back of your mind. You need to understand that in your tutorial letter, your assignment is clearly outlined and there is a clear guidelines as well that is provided for you in terms of the research proposal then you need to specifically number specific section or subsections under specific sections of the research proposal also very important for the proposal is that you are required to have to compile a reference list. This is a list of all the resources, all the cited materials. You need to make use of APA referencing style for in-text citations and reference list. Also very important, you need to list only sources that you actually used or cited in your proposal. And please avoid plagiarism and credit all sources of information. I have noticed that in many cases, our students normally just copy previous studies. That is not going to happen. You are not. You are actually. Um, you are actually encouraged to write your own proposal. Do not copy previous studies. Do not copy um, proposals that were done previously by IOL students because we are going to run it through the plagiarism detection software and we can actually pick up that you have uh, copied that proposal and then you can forfeit your marks you will maybe be asked to redo it and if, if there are no changes you, you know so many so much can happen because we are saying plagiarism is an academic dishonest so we actually need to make sure that we write our own proposal and that we credit all sources of information. That is very important. So once you are done, you then generate then also the reference list. It is also very important. You need to understand how to use Microsoft Word because it can really make your work easier. You can actually already 
enter the reference, uh, the cited, you know, the, the sources, the materials that you are using. And if the, at the end, once you are done um, compiling your research proposal, you can actually generate what we call the reference, uh, your references. Then you can have a, a reference list that is generated by the system, by your computer, you see. That same applies, you just format your references accordingly. Same applies to the table of content. So that is actually very important. And now we can quickly look at common mistakes in proposal writing. You know, failure to provide the proper context to frame the research question, failure to delimit the boundary conditions of your research. These are some of the mistakes that uh, most uh, our students um, happen to do. Failure to cite landmark studies. You are just copying and pasting. Very important. Uh, also failure to accurately present the theoretical and empirical contributions by other researchers. Failure to stay focused on the research questions. Focus on your research questions. If there are three, only on those ones. Because the research proposal should be um, actually clearly uh, presented such that you avoid going around and about. You know, failure to develop a coherent uh, and persuasive argument for the proposed research. So these are some of the common mistakes. Too much detail on minor issues, but not enough detail on major issues. Too much rambling, going all over the map without clear sense. So this is what I've already addressed, and too many citations lapses and incorrect references. As I say, please just select the eight for your proposal for now. And also too long or too short, failing to follow the APA referencing style and sloping writing. So please make use of academic writing for your proposal. These are very important links for you. You can actually just go through them and you can get more information on how to write a research or develop a research proposal. And having said that, I would like to thank you for your time and for listening to this presentation. You can go through it over and over again just to make sure that you understand what is required of you when compiling your research proposal. Please feel free to contact me on my email address. You can drop me an email at etunangifikwa at gmail.com and also text me uh, on 085-266-3698 and the best time to contact me is actually between 8.30 and 4.30. Then I will actually attend to your queries accordingly. Thank you.